business plan can either be a fantastic and compelling document that presents a persuasive case for your startup or a significant waste of time for you and the person reading it. It takes more than just a basic business plan template and some fill in the blank format to make an investor want to give you their hard earned money. The fact is, if your business plan doesn't captivate them from the first sentence, you've already lost their attention. But with the right approach and by avoiding some common mistakes, you can create a pro level business plan that captivates readers and makes them want to take part in what you've got going on. So if you want to write a plan that investors actually want to read instead of feeling forced to read, then grab a bucket of worms, a fishing pole, and a canoe because I'm about to show you how to write a business plan that'll help you reel in the big fish. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Hey guys, I'm Mike Sims from Think Lions, and on this episode of Startup Squared, I'm gonna give you all the tips you need to avoid wasting your time writing a business plan that no one reads, and instead create a fantastic document that readers grip to like a best-selling novel. But look, you don't even have to say it. I already know what you're thinking. Do I even need a business plan? And the answer is yes, of course you do, but maybe not for the reasons you think. So before we get started, let me go ahead and answer some questions that I'm sure you're already asking yourself. The question that I get most of all is, do investors even read business plans? And the truth is, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Every investor is different. Some want to see a comprehensive business plan to get the whole idea before making a decision, while others are comfortable with just a pitch, a Q&A session, and some due diligence. But investors aren't the only one you may need to submit a business plan to. Many business creditors may request a business plan, Incubators and accelerators often require them during the application process, and they're also just really helpful in keeping the team on the same page. Also, an investor may not request a business plan, but they'll likely ask you questions that your business plan contains the answers to. I'm sure that you're also asking, but how am I supposed to write a business plan when I don't even know where my business will be in one year or three years or five years or 10 years? Okay, maybe you weren't asking yourself that, but I'm sure that you would have had that question at some point. And the answer is, is that a business plan is really a living document. It changes as assumptions are validated and hypothetical numbers get replaced with actual revenues. Your first version plan is a snapshot of what your business would be based on today. But as you launch, grow and validate and pivot your business, you'll continually update your plan to reflect those changes. I won't bore you with the details of what sections to add to your business plan or how to format it because that's all pretty standard information. But if you want an incredible template, I'll leave a link down in the description for a format that we use to write plans for over 500 startups, helping them collectively raise tens of millions of dollars. Instead of telling you how to write a business plan, I'll show you three mistakes that most people make when writing a plan that immediately turns off readers. And then I'll provide you with a few tips to put your document in the top echelon of business plans. When it comes to mistakes, there are many that can be made, but some are more detrimental than others. Let's quickly go through them so you can make sure that you avoid them when constructing your plan. The first mistake you need to avoid is writing fluff. Probably around 80% of the business plans I review are full of filler stuff, the same ideas repeated over and over again, and no real direction. Investors are busy. Some of them receive dozens of startup inquiries every day. Their time is limited and the second they begin feeling like the information is no longer beneficial, they'll just simply stop reading. So avoid writing fluff. Instead, write the stuff that matters and nothing else. Keep it concise and clear and don't harp on the same things over and over. In other words, if you want investors to pay attention to the plan, then get to the point. The second mistake is writing a business plan that is unsupported and full of assumptions that have no evidence backing them up. Words are pretty cheap and I can really tell you anything in the business plan. I can write that I'm creating a self-driving flying car and that every person with a driver's license will line up to purchase one, but it means absolutely nothing if I can't prove that it is desirable, feasible, and viable. Before you write your business plan, confirm all of your assumptions. Run experiments to validate your hypotheses, and that way when you write your plan, you will have tangible evidence to back it up. The 
third most common mistake in business planning is rushing the process. Ideally, you want to write your business plan now because you don't want to get caught in a situation where a strategic partner or investor requests to see your plan and then you have to rush to complete it. Unfortunately, when a document is rushed, the basics go out the window. And as a result, the document becomes disjointed and fragmented, spelling and grammar mistakes happen, and you lose the opportunity to fine tune the strategy before presenting it to a potential investor. If you just avoid these three common mistakes, you'll already be in the top 25 to 30% of business plans. But honestly, that's not enough. In the US alone, over 600,000 businesses launch every year. Of these businesses, less than 0.05% receive venture capital and angel investors fund less than 1%. Investors look for standouts, and if you're gonna stand out, you need a business that rises above the rest and a business plan that can present the company in a way that is both digestible and captivating. So how do you get into the top percentile of awesome business plans? Well, it takes a few pro tips that one only obtains after years of studying and writing business plans, working with investors, and participating in numerous investor startup conversations. But fortunately, I've already done all that hard work for you, and now I can share with you the secrets of the masters. Karate here. Karate here. Karate never here. But before we discuss how to get your business plan to the next level, if you're looking for tips and tutorials to grow your business exponentially, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. When you start writing your business plan, you need to be in the right mind frame. Realize that you're not just giving information, you're also seeking to draw the reader's curiosity, keep them engaged, and compel them to fund your startup. People often struggle to write business plans because they view it as this tedious exercise instead of as an opportunity to get people excited about their business. They start off bored, the boredom transfers into their writing, and then they wonder why investors fall asleep before reaching the end of the first page. The thing that makes them dull is that they lack a story. They lack a powerful narrative that engages readers and keeps them on their toes, and instead they present information the way a student would when writing an essay just packed end to end with data seeking to prove some kind of thesis. And yes, data is essential, but investors probably won't remember your revenue forecast for year 2.3, but they will remember a remarkable story, like a story of innovation, a story of success, or a story of inspiration. If your business plan was a book, your business would be like the main character. And like a book, that story would present the character, showcase a challenge that the character needs to overcome, and then explain a series of exciting events that results in the character winning against all odds. That's how J.K. Rowling made both kids and adults stick their faces inside of a 700-page book about wizards and magic, and that's the same way you're gonna keep an investor invested in reading your business plan. In some cases, you may be presenting your plan to investors that are already experts in your field, but many times the person on the receiving end might have little to no knowledge of your industry or your specific target market. It's a mistake to think that the reader will know as much about your business as you do or understand the technical jargon that you and your team speak in or that they know anything about the problem that your solution solves. An effective business plan levels the playing field for all readers and allows even the most unknowledgeable readers to connect with the startup's customer segments and the challenges that they face. You need to explain every concept thoroughly in plain but engaging language. Simplify any complex concepts with charts, graphs, and graphics that are easy to grasp. Write it in a comprehensive manner that allows them to build their knowledge and understanding as they progress throughout the document. As you assess and proofread your plan, Look for any areas that could cause a reader to pause or require them to think too deeply to understand. Rephrase those ideas or provide deeper explanations. Another good idea is to include a summary of definitions in the front of the business plan and to make sure that you define any abbreviations. It's not about dumbing your plan down or assuming that your reader is anything other than intelligent, but it's about eliminating any resistance and ensuring that every reader connects with all the concepts that you are proposing. The third thing to remember when you're writing a business plan is who you're writing it for. About a year ago, I had a conversation with an active angel investor who told me that 
of all the plans that he's received, less than 1% were written with him in mind. Too many entrepreneurs write business plans for the benefit of themselves rather than the people that will read it. To write a successful business plan, you have to get into the mind of the readers and into the mind of the investors you are presenting it to. You wanna understand things like what excites them, what turns them off, what weaknesses are they gonna find in your business strategy that might cause them to lose interest. What position do they want to see the business in before they choose to invest? When you know who you're writing for, you can highlight the parts that would interest them the most and explain underdeveloped areas of the business that may cause them hesitation. Businesses that get funded aren't lucky or magical. Instead, they are just simply positioned in a way where it's easy for an investor to understand how they would generate a humongous return. After you read your business plan, ask yourself, if you were worth $1 million, would your business plan excite you to invest $50,000, $100,000, or even $250,000? Are the proof in the strategy so strong that you'd be willing to risk your family's finances to reap the potential rewards? If you read through your business plan and you don't get that feeling, then it isn't ready for investors. And if you do get that feeling, quite frankly, it's still not really enough because of course you would invest in your business because it's your business. But you only get one chance to make a great first impression on an investor. So don't be so quick to send your business plan to the investors you really want to partner with. Instead, first find other opportunities to get feedback. For example, you can participate in business plan contests and see how your plan stands up against other startups. Or you can submit it to investors that you are less interested in working with who you can afford not to impress and see whether they respond positively or negatively. If they show disinterest, find out what they dislike and use that feedback to strengthen your plan before sending it out again. Like I said before, business plan is a living document and as you continue to optimize it, it'll get stronger and stronger. There's a massive difference between a business plan and a great business plan. One excites readers and the other leaves them feeling like their time was wasted. Our team has written hundreds of business plans for startups across all industries. And these are the considerations that we make every time we participate in the business planning project. Check out the description below and download a free copy of our business plan template. And if you need help with your business plan, there's a link to our website down there too so you can contact us directly. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.